Hello and welcome back to the One Hotspur uh, YouTube channel. I'm Toby from Underscore Spur Center, and today I'm joined by Charlie from CB Designs. How are you doing, Charlie? Uh, hi. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm great. Um, looking forward to discussing um, all the managers that we've gone through. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, uh, before we get into the video really quickly, though, uh, make sure to subscribe and click the like button and turn the notifications bell on so that you never miss when we post a new video. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. So today we're going to be ranking Ernesto Valverde, Christophe Galtier, Gennaro Gattuso, Jurgen Klinsmann, and Eric Ten Hag. And our tiers are Mauricio Pochettino, which is like very, very good. The GOAT. Um, the GOAT, yeah. Um, and then we have the very good tier, uh, the good tier, the Ben Davis tier, which would be like average, um, and then the Clinton Najee tier, which is <clears throat> awful. So, um, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Let's start with uh, Ernesto Valverde. What are your thoughts on him? Um, personally, out of all the options we have, he's one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. Only Ten Hag I'd take over him, uh, potentially Ragnik, but I think he's a very underrated manager. I don't know yeah. if he'd quite fit our style, but I'd, it would also be very interesting to see how he'd do. Um, I, don't, I don't, really don't think we're going to get him. But mm. at least it's a bit more ambitious looking at someone like him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit bit of an improvement over Gattuso. Yeah. So, I uh, mean, if you haven't been keeping would... up with the news, uh, yeah. we were linked with Gattuso pretty strongly um, through the day before yesterday, I think. Yeah, um, maybe it was safety. yesterday. But um, uh, it's, it's fallen apart since then, and now we're getting linked with uh, Valverde. So, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to Gattuso. Why it's not Valverde? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think um, I think I'd put Valverde in good. Good. Um, I think yeah. there's a case for him to be in very good. Um, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I don't know if it's very good or good. Uh, let's just put him at very good because comparing yeah. him to the others, he's mm -hmm. high up. I think I think he's been. Um, I thought he was exceptional for Barcelona. I mean, he won the league um, twice was, in his first two years. Um, I but, thought he was very underrated. Um, yeah, I agree. I think know, he was very underrated. People kept comparing him to, you know, how Pep did, how mm -hmm. others did at Barca. And then he was like a bit of a disappointment because he didn't want to win the Champions League. But yeah. players like Messi, Suarez and Neymar had their best mm -hmm. seasons under him. So Yeah, and that's I, the other thing is that's why I wouldn't put him in Maurizio Pochettino because he was working with superstars like yeah. Suarez, Messi, Neymar. Um, and at Spurs, he's going to have Kane, Son. Stephen Bergfine or Kane and Son and Eric Dyer and Tavis and Sanchez. So uh, he's not working with Gerard Piquet's in defense. Um, so hopefully, I mean, hopefully we improve over the summer. But uh, for now, um, with the squad we're working with, I think he'd be in very good. Uh, but moving on, uh, Christophe Galtier uh, was the manager of Lille, uh, left at the end of the season uh, after they won uh, League One, uh, dethroning uh, PSG. Uh, it was yeah. their first league title in like 50 years or something like that. Well, I rate him. I, I do rate him. But to be honest, if we could take anyone from Lille, I'd take Luis Campos. But we yeah. just got Paratici. So, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a pretty good manager. But really, it depends how you look at it. Because mm. any way we put it, the French league is not yeah. the strongest league in the world. I wouldn't say mm -hmm. it's a farmer's league, but it's just not the strongest. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the comparisons is, I mean, look at Burak Yilmaz in the Euros. He's been an absolute liability for Turkey, and he was one of the top scorers in the league. And so, yeah. you know, I mean, maybe that's a bit harsh, but still, yeah. uh, I think I I put him in. Oh, this is hard. I I think I put him in good, borderline yeah, I think very good, but I think yeah, good is fine. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think for me, uh, it's exceptional what he's done in Lille, yeah, uh, and I think there is a case to be made uh, that he could go in uh, the very good. Um, yeah, but he I mean, his... Had, yeah, his um, squad development is great. You know, mm -hmm. um, a lot of youth, um, yeah, and also pretty free flowing football. So he he mm -hmm. he fit he fit the categories, but yeah, I, just, I, I don't I think, think he'd be is... quite at the level of uh, Ernesto Valverde. Yeah, so that good he'd have to drop fair. to good. Good is um, good. now uh, Gennaro Gattuso. For me, he goes straight into Clint Energy. Yeah, honestly, yeah, but the thing is, uh, it's a very interesting case that this. Um, ten percent. That now, um, you know, the new thing where the fans own the ten percent of the club, 
And so this is what this was key to stopping us from getting in. You know, yeah. immediately there was advanced talks and we were just about to get him. And then Levy says no because of that. And, you know, this way, you know, people are saying, oh, Levy finally made a good decision. I mean, he didn't make the decision because yeah. Gattuso was a bad manager. I mean, he is a bad manager, but he didn't make it because he doubts his managing uh, capabilities. He only did it because we would have problems um, later with the media and press because Gattuso mm-hmm. has came out saying, uh, you know, women shouldn't play football and, you know, a lot yeah. of stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I think that really did save us. Um, yeah. I mean, then what, it's so controversial because the guy got sacked 23 days after being well, appointed at Fiorentina because he, he didn't left. agree with transfers. Yeah. So he's coming to Tottenham after not agreeing with transfers. I mean, mm-hmm. are you serious? Yeah, um, that makes no sense. But he's not a good manager anyway. I really don't rate him. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, he did all right with Napoli. But the problem with him is he's another Jose in the sense of his mentality. But even yeah. worse, he's an absolute mm-hmm. hothead. He'd have yeah. he'd have huge outbursts in the media. You know, mm-hmm. he, the players would literally be crying after every training <laughs> session. So honestly, I think it's a great thing that deal broke through. Mm-hmm. I mean, best example of that was, um, I think it was 2008. I could be wrong on that, but uh, Spurs played AC Milan and uh, Gattuso was playing uh, for AC Milan. I think he was their holding midfielder. And um, he choked one of Spurs staff, uh, Joe oh. Jordan. He Easy. like neck grabbed him. So yeah, I don't think he'd be a great fit for us. <laughs> but I mean, I do think that we could use like that type of passion maybe no, not like that I do much agree that we need but um that our players need to get a grip and you know we need mm-hmm. someone to really take us forward in that sense but i mean he's he's on another level i mean jose is nothing compared to him mm-hmm. yeah all right uh moving on to jürgen klinsman uh for me he'd be either in ben davis or clinton is what are your thoughts on him you see i mean obviously you're usa you're from the usa mm-hmm. so you're you watch USA more than I do. So I don't know yeah. how he did with them. But what mm-hmm. I do know is that when, when did, what, what years, when, when, when did he actually work with you guys? With the US? Yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know when he started, but I do know um, he was in charge through the uh, 2014 World Cup and then he was mm-hmm. sacked so you uh, see, shortly before the 2018 World Cup. The interesting, like, I think a few thing, months. With, the interesting thing with Klinsman is you know i know that you're not big on him because he did pretty badly with the usa but at the same time my my argument against that is that you don't have the you didn't have the pulisic's the mckenny's yeah you had no no for sure well your best player was clint dempsey so i, I really mm-hmm. i wouldn't say there was much don't start about, to sing clint dempsey that guy's no, a legend I'm not dis- no he is a legend <laughs> and he was he played for Tottenham. So i'm not dissing him mm-hmm. it's just he, there wasn't many high caliber players yeah so it's hot but and, i mean you know, we still had a good enough team that we yeah, should have know, qualified for the 2018 World he, Cup. he did not do well enough but my mm-hmm. argument is when he was at germany which is obviously much, much better country know, yeah that he uh, did he like win something i think he, I thought I think he, he did something with but germany he, he was also pretty good attacking football but you can't he was really also judge. pretty mediocre at uh Bayern munich when he coached them so yeah yeah so it's hard to see mm-hmm. but at the same time i think ben davis i think it's a bit harsh yeah. into the ng because it's a yeah you don't I really agree. know how it work out plus mm-hmm. i mean he's a fan favorite in the sense that i mean yeah. he really is one of the club legends so mm-hmm. i think we have to give him ben davis but yeah. you know i would be slightly disappointed i mean it's it's not very ambitious to go for him because we, we, we can go for him whenever we want he said he wants to join us in that so he's not the most high caliber manager but i think he could surprise a few because he does play good football. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Ben Davis is there. Yeah. Um, and, and just now for the, the man <laughs> uh, just really quick, the last thing on uh, Clinton was he did have a pretty successful um, 2014 World Cup with us. I mean, uh, we drew against Portugal, who like has Ronaldo and had quite a few good players. Uh, we only lost to Germany. I think it was, ooh, actually, it might have been, it was either 3 0 or 1 0. Either way, like that's not too bad considering it was. Germany, who ended up winning the whole thing. Um, and we beat Ghana, who had been kind of a trouble team for the U.S. before him. Uh, and that was the, the group of death, and we made it out of it. I mean, Portugal didn't qualify for the uh, round of 16, and we did. so. Um, and then we made it to extra time against Belgium, who also a very good side. So he did do pretty well for us in that, uh, in that sense. But then um, 
he really struggled to get us into qualification for the 2018 World Cup. And uh, he was sacked because it didn't look like we were going to make it. Then we brought in a new manager and uh, he wasn't able to rescue it. So, yeah. Anyhow, on to Eric Ten Hag, my favorite. Your favorite, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, um, for me, he goes straight up there. Yeah, he, for I me, so he's basically Pochettino 2.0. You know, I've mm-hmm. seen people say he's unproven because he's in the Dutch league and all that, yeah. which in some sense is true. But when a manager can get to the semi final, or the Champions mm-hmm. League, like I've seen people say, oh, it was just a fluke, it was a one-off. Yeah. But you do not destroy Real Madrid and Juventus playing beautiful yeah. football in a one-off. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I, I really do rate him, and if he can bring Graven Birch or Kudus with him, you know, that that's that, no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah. So yeah, for me, he's definitely up there, Mauricio Pochettino. He fits everything that Mauricio Pochettino fits. He's mm-hmm. young. Is he like only 35 or 40? And he's at 40 something. Yeah, okay. So he's I pretty young. Him. He plays free flowing attacking football. He works with youth. He's literally everything Levy's looking for. And I don't know why we haven't just gone all out on him. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but yeah, he's definitely Moritz Pochettino. But yeah. uh, also, I noticed that you didn't include Ragnik um, because I've seen mm-hmm. like uh, reports that we're still interested in him. So, yeah. I think we should just say where we'd put him. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, really quickly, before I know you're a big fan. Yeah, I know uh, you're a big fan of Ragnik. So... Before we move on to Rang- Ragnik, though, I just want to talk about uh, Ten Hag a little bit. Uh, Pochettino is 49 and Ten Hag is 51, so they're kind of around the same yeah. age. But yeah. um, one of the reasons I really want Ten Hag is I think he'd fit our system. Uh, our, not our system. I think he'd fit with our players really well. I think yeah. Steven Bergvine under him could be dangerous. Perfect, yeah. I think uh, Los Celso uh, could play a really big role. I think even Harry Winks um, could have a role under him. Uh, and I think uh, Tiangi and Dombele, maybe, I don't think Tiangi and Dombele would actually fit his system as well, but I think he would be given freedom like to really do things. Uh, and then I think our wing backs would really enjoy playing under him. Uh, you see, you noticed, um, uh, I mean, you said about Tiangi and Dombele having freedom. I've noticed, you know, watching France, in the Euros, the thing that the Deschamps has done with France is he plays so free midfielders Kante Pogba and um, what's his name Rabio. The reason yeah. he plays Rabio is because that's a holding midfielder, so it gives Pogba much more freedom to do what he wants, and that's been very visible. So I think we need something like that because I think that would really give Ndombele or Los also freedom um, to really create. But yeah, I think Rag. Uh, yeah. Um, Ten Hag is definitely um, favorite for me, um, for you as well. Yeah. Um, so moving on to to Rang Nick. Um, I know you. I think. Of yeah, I am. I think his tactics. It's uh, Ten Hag is like more of a measured approach, like uh, and uh, Ernesto Valverde is more of like keeping possession and building it up, and uh, Rang Nick is more of just like all out attack like every time you get the ball i think it was i read something on him it was either five seconds or seven seconds um, where it was anywhere on the field if his side got the ball he wanted a shot on goal within five to seven seconds um which is like if that can give you the idea of just he likes playing big balls up to the um to the forward uh, who can settle it and then play in a winger so that's like perfect kane and son yeah. um and then take a shot so that would be tiring um like as a just approach in general so i'm not sure how a lot of our lazier players um, would deal with that. But um, if we could get some transfer market stuff done. Yeah. And then given that the uh, fans and social media was able to say no to Gattuso because of his sexist, racist, and homophobic comments, um, Rangnick has said some controversial things in the past. Um, like he said that Nabi Kita, um, when he played for Leipzig, when... Uh, Rangnick was in charge. He said that Kita's head had been turned by an entire village because they wanted him to go to Liverpool so that he'd make more money uh, or something like that. So, and Kita isn't from a village. He was from a uh, place called Konakri. I could be saying it wrong, but I mean, that is a population of 1.6 million people. And then he said he didn't think that um, this, the next one isn't really racist, but he just said he didn't think that like um, taking the knee or anything like that should be done uh, in football, which I don't agree with, but it's, that's, I don't, yeah, I don't know. yeah, let's just, um, 
Yeah, well, Leave yeah, it that. it's pretty controversial, but I don't think it would create too much problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and yeah, it's not the I same mean, as what Katusa said. Yeah, yeah, what Katusa said is much worse. Yeah. So I um I do rate Ragnik. I think it's a very interesting style. But as you said, it would be struggling for players. You know, I, I can imagine how tiring mm-hmm. the training sessions would be. But this is I was talking about yeah. this the other day. Uh, I know we don't have much time, so I'll just keep it quick. Personally, mm-hmm. uh, we just need to clear the whole squad. You know, we can't have any of this mentality yeah. anymore. Uh, honestly, like, mm-hmm. the thing is, what we've noticed is, you know, in, uh, when in when we had um, Sherwood, we hit rock bottom. Then we sold Bale, had money, rebuilt re- re- the squad. And mm-hmm. sadly, we're back to that route one. And I think we, yeah. I mean, I don't want to sell Kane, but if we did sell him, in some way, it could be a good thing. Because mm-hmm. we really do need to get rid of this mentality since the final, you know. Um, yeah. Also, I've been he- hearing like rumors like uh, Levy just wants to get a manager to balance things that things out, and then he's waiting for Potts to join in two years. I don't yeah. like that. I do not want that. That is bad mentality. I do not want to mm-hmm. waste two years. You know, I That's love Potts. He's my favorite ever manager by far. Mm-hmm. But I don't even know if I'd bring him back because we just need a total change. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, he'd probably do well, really well, when he, if he came back. But I, I just mm-hmm. think we need a whole new setup. You know, we need to. Get like hardly any players from before. New manager, new start. You know, I, I just mm-hmm. really think that we just need to start again. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I want to say. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's. I hadn't thought of it like that before, but yeah, I think that's the wrong mentality to have. Is like just waiting for Poch. Like we should be trying to do our best to win things every year, and I mean, that's why, you know, twenty years of Enik won trophy. So. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anything else you want to add? Not really. I think I've said everything. All right. Well, thank you uh, for watching and listening. We appreciate you all. Um, click the subscribe button. Uh, click the like button. It's both free, costs you nothing, and it would make our days a lot better. Uh, we're trying to get to 100 subscribers, so you know, share with your friends. Um, yeah. We appreciate you all, appreciate you all, and we'll uh, we'll see you in the next one. So, come on, you Spurs. Through the blossoms on, down into the light now.